All right. Looks like we are good to go here, Josh. Yo, yo, yo. All right, perfect. What's going on, everyone? Hey, guys. Uh, so right. me and Josh are just uh, back like here. We are good to go here, Josh. Hold on. Oh. All right, perfect. Okay, I just had to mute that. Okay, uh, hey guys, uh, so me and Josh are back. Um, we are the mentors or some of the mentors here at Ecom Freedom. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know us, um, my name is Jeff Greenslade. I'm the head of Amazon here at Ecom Freedom. I work alongside of Andrew Hoffman on the Amazon side of things. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, Josh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So guys, uh, for those of you that have not heard of me, uh, my name is Josh Back and uh we're on the Shopify side of uh, Econ Freedom. Uh, I work alongside McKay, and uh, yeah, we just we're just in there all all the time. <laughs> so, guys, we just came on uh, live today um, because it's the last five hours of our Cyber Monday event. Um, basically, this is the last chance to get the the bundle for seven ninety nine or each of the courses for four ninety nine. After today, it's going to shoot back up to um, you know, our regular prices after the Black Friday event. This is the biggest sale we do all of all year. Uh, so we kind of wanted to come on here and answer any of your guys' questions that you might have um, as you guys continue to roll and roll into the, you know, the QA here. Um, we'll kind of give you guys a idea of what the mentorship is going to look like um, here at Econ Freedom. So for example, one of the big things that we do each week is, um, you know, I on my side of things and me and Andrew and then Josh and McKay on the Shopify side of things. We both do separate uh, question and answering calls. So they're, you know, two hours, uh, two or three hours each week. Um, so if you guys have any questions about e-commerce whatsoever, whether it be Shopify, which Josh is the, you know, master in and then Amazon side of things, which uh, I should be able to answer your questions on. Uh, shoot away. Um, this is, you know, basically, uh, we're just kind of giving you guys free knowledge here. So, uh, and this we'll is also like, um, you know, just to open it up, like you guys can ask anything, right? Like anything to do with, you know, how the, uh, like what you're going to get, like what kind of like refunds or anything like that. Um, yeah, anything. Uh, or and even in, in our own businesses, obviously we won't discuss or share too many like nuances of it. But we're happy to share like how uh, we did and what our strategies were for Black Friday, what we learned, yeah. all of these kinds of things. We're happy to share uh, all of our little neat, uh, tricks, I guess. All right. So let's see. Um... Yeah, so one question we have here is, good afternoon, is the course online or will I receive a hard copy? So basically the way that the courses work right now is we have the online platform where um, essentially we have both of the courses in online form. So there are instructional videos throughout the entire course. Um, and, uh, you know, on the Amazon side of things, I think we have 13 or 14 modules and, on the uh shopify side of things i think it's around 16 right Josh? 16 modules yeah <clears throat> right so in each of these sides of the course uh basically there's going to be pdfs um under each lesson with uh things like action steps uh so uh, boxes to check to make sure you're being holding yourself accountable for the things you do in the course um and yes, there actually is a hard copy. Uh, what we call is we call it a box set. And you can kind of see a little bit more about that. If you go on the uh, sales page, ecomfreedom.com slash Amazon or slash Shopify, you'll be able to see a lot more uh, in regards to that box set. But basically, there are two giant uh, textbooks, and this is for each course. So the Amazon course and the Shopify uh, box sets are actually being manufactured right now. Uh, so they are not available at this time. Um, but uh, with the bundle um, for the Black Friday event, the box set is sold separately. So for the Amazon course, it is sold separately. separately. Um, just for the Black Friday event, usually it is included in the price of the course. Uh, but yeah, it, it comes with two giant textbooks 
one big MBA text or, uh, you know, book, and it comes with a, um, you know, accountability pamphlet as well, where you can kind of journal your, um, you know, your findings and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a question that we had was, um, so this is one thing that, uh, especially on our side, we're looking to implement, uh, and this is like an accountability mental side. So this is a question um, that is popping up quite often. Um, essentially, we understand how important accountability is. So uh, between the mentors, between the heads here, and between the uh, the the big hefe here, Jeff, uh, we need to. We're going to get all of that approved and uh, hopefully rolled out pretty quickly. Um, well, that's the intention, at least. We we don't know. We need to figure that out. Just at this point, you know, with all of our because Jeff, Andrew, McKay, myself, we're all in the trenches. We all run our own businesses, so it's very difficult for us to kind of follow you guys along every single day, right? We're here to help you guys, here to support you on any questions that you guys might have. However. Um, you know, just chasing you guys around like a teacher is not something that um, we are able to do at this point. However, we, we do want to eventually uh, deploy that because it is very important. So yeah, hope that answers it. So um, Josh, another question for you is yeah. how much did you need to start a Shopify dropshipping uh, business as a beginner? Uh, I mean... Yeah, it's a bit of a loaded question, right? Um, a lot of people will say, you know, you can start Shopify dropshipping with zero dollars. Um, but in all honesty, I personally think that you should have at least, you know, five hundred to a thousand dollars, kind of as a nest egg, um, set set aside to start spending and start using as kind of like a tuition fee, right? Because every time you do a, take a step, unfortunately, you know because we're doing business here, there is going to be a cost associated to that. Um, and you, may, may, you might make mistakes, right? But that's why we are here as mentors to kind of help you alongside when you're actually doing it so that we can lower those expenses, right? So, uh, you know, think of it this way. I like to kind of tell my students this way. If you were to start a brick and mortar business, you know, 20 years ago, you needed to get the lease, you needed to get, you know, fit outs, you need to get inventory, all of that kinds of stuff. You'd be easily out of pocket, like a hundred grand, right? To start a business uh, for 500 to a thousand dollars right now, like it's, it's an opportunity of a lifetime, right? There is no other, um, you know, no other time in history where this was possible, right? So it, it's just a fantastic uh, thing. So. Hope that answers your question. So 500 to 1,000. Awesome. So another question um, was, hey, guys, uh, when will the, I assume, Amazon course be updated? Um, so there's modules on differentiation, unique selling propositions. And I assume you're uh, referring to, you know, product development and, and stuff like that. So this is like kind of considered um, very advanced or not very advanced, but like more so advanced uh tactics when it comes to the product development side of things whereas like you know there's a spectrum from product differentiation to um you know a product improvement and then a product uh design and then like you know uh, kind of revamping a complete uh product right so i would say the course is up to the standard of differentiation right now um so there's a couple of lessons in the course now where we actually peel back the curtain on a um product that we're actually bringing to the market here at Ecom Freedom. Um, and essentially, uh, we're showing you guys, you know, who our customer avatar was, um, how we were able to prove demand, even though that product specifically is not sold on Amazon right now. And, you know, what our unique selling proposition was for that product. Um, so as far as like the pro uh, product uh, innovation and design uh, section goes, like we get into more advanced uh, modules of the course. So that's something that's going to come in the next year um, that we're all going to work on. Uh, and I think this is something that's going to be added to the uh, Amazon course first and then uh, kind of grandfathered into the Shopify course because Josh just, you know, worked so hard uh, over the last um, several months kind of getting that Shopify course completely up to date, Josh, uh, Dan, and McKay. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say within the next four months, we're going to start drip feeding those kind of modules. And the things we're going to kind of touch on is, 
you know, the different molding processes, what kind of products are going to, you know, require an injection mold versus, um, you know, a sand mold or, or, or a cast, uh, cast mold in process. So, and, and I think, I think those are valuable lessons to have when it comes to e-commerce, um, and, you know, retail and, um, you know, e-commerce, uh, as a whole, because the idea here is to build a brand, right? So it starts with e-commerce. It starts with Amazon. It starts with Shopify, right? You dial in Amazon, you dial in Shopify. Then where do you go? You go into your Walmarts, your Etsy's, and then you try to go to retail. But retail is a completely different beast. And if we can get to uh, a point someday as like a, a company here at Ecom Freedom, um, it would be fantastic to kind of show you guys the processes and, and stuff that we went through to get to uh, retail stores and, and stuff like that. So that's the idea guys. But like, like you said, um, it's a, uh, e-commerce is constantly changing and, and we're doing our best to stay on top of things. Um, but, uh, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, one of the best things about the course is that we have the course updated now to the point where, um, you know, it's good going into 2022 and the 2023 and like, as me and Josh or McKay or Andrew or Dan sees an update that needs to be implemented, uh, we're going to do it right on the hop. As for like complete module revamps and additional modules, that is something that's going to come in this next year because, you know, Josh, we've been able to free up a lot of our time updating the current curriculum uh, this year. So, Perfect. I mean, that was insane value right there. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> I was about to get my notebook out for <laughs> um all right so let's uh let's give Jeff a break and let's uh let's quickly go through um so I think me me ten you were asking about a a video with three budgets that you can spend for Shopify so I actually can't recall that video but I remember that it is a uh it is kind of like a a principle that I try to teach so I believe that there's three different types of budgets uh, that everyone has, right? Because everyone has different financial uh, backgrounds, uh, different foundations, all of that kinds of stuff, right? So the three uh, that I have is one, if you're like, if you don't have that much cash, right? You don't have much cash saved up. You need some sort of cash coming in or whatnot. Um, the second level is, let's say you have a little bit of cash, right? Like, uh, you, you know, you, let's say you have five grand, right? Five grand, you're willing to invest. If it if it fails or if it flops, whatever, you're okay with that. You've kind of got to set aside. And then the third one is like, you're just straight up baller. You're rich and you have like 20 grand, right? 10 grand um, saved up that you're willing to invest into starting your own business, right? Because multiple times, uh, multiple people have come and fall into those three different categories. So the first section, right? When you're a little bit cash poor, I would say it's very, very important to try and go ahead and with like drop shipping, right? Because drop shipping at the beginning, it will allow you to one, get proof of concept and start to get some cash into the bank and which you can reinvest to grow your business. And therefore kind of, it works as a, a snowball, if you will, right? It, you kind of build on top of each other, right? The second level is if you have a little bit more cash, right? You have five grand, right? You can jump into either Shopify or Amazon with this. Uh, you go out, you do your product research, you research like a fiend, right? And you find a product that is selling well. And then you can, you feel like you can differentiate, whether it be through your marketing, whether it through be your target avatar, right? Or, you know, you just, you just package it nicer, right? There's all these different ways that you can do that. And you just go out and you buy a minimum order quantity, right? So you buy like 100, 200, 300 units, and then you just go straight out the gate with a, like a brand, right? It takes a little bit more time and takes a little bit more expertise, but it's definitely doable. And a lot of um, our students on Amazon, that's what they do when they, well, they're succeeding, right? Through amazing mentorship. Um, and the third one is like, finally, you know, you're just straight up baller. You can go out and do what Jeff was talking about before, going out and making a brand new product, right? Finding an existing product that does uh, sells well, adding some added benefits to it through molds, custom designs, all of that kind of stuff, which all cost money, right? So there's other three different options that I would say, uh, depending on your financial circumstances, you can jump into uh, for Shopify and for Amazon. But Amazon, I'd say probably the second and the third is more relatable. But if you have low experience, try to mitigate your risk just because you are starting a business, right? So just be a little bit cautious about that. 
regardless of anyone's financial foundations, losing a couple grand is never a fun thing. So just be a little bit careful. That's what, that's what I'd say. Awesome. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so Michael says, Hey guys, for those of you that are thinking of getting the course, it, it is so underpriced at this discount. The Facebook group alone is worth the standard price. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, and guys, like one thing we're trying to do here with this econ freedom, you know, as a whole, we're trying to, you know, introduce as much transparency as we can, right? Like we've taken on, um, a review service that is called trust pilot and basically this is a third party re review service. So there is no way for us, you know, to manipulate uh, the reviews that go on this site. Um, they are all tried and true students that have been through the course. And, um, you know, if you take the time to uh, kind of read the reviews, cause you know, we get it, like, I get it. Like several years ago uh, when I was like kind of pretty lean on cash uh, when it came to, you know, extracurricular um, things such as starting your own uh, e-commerce business and stuff like that. You're obviously going to be wary over spending $800 on a, um, on a, on a course, which you have no idea if it works, but like we've, we've introduced this trust pilot system to show you guys that, you know, this has nothing to do with us. This is just people that came through the course and um, are leaving the, these reviews. So, um, and, and they're, they're fantastic for the most part. Obviously there's a, there's going to be a couple of people that aren't happy and, you know, me and Josh and McKay and Dan and Andrew uh, and, and the whole team for that matter, we, we do our best um, to kind of help you guys along the way. But, um, you know, I, I would say that our turnaround for getting back to students and stuff, if it's the weekend or something like that, or Christmas or the holidays, um, usually during the weeks, uh, we'll get back to you guys the same day for sure. Um, we'll have all the questions answered in the Facebook groups. Um, mm -hmm. you'll have a, you'll have an opportunity to kind of network with, uh, several people, you know, in, in your area for that matter, um, in the Facebook groups as well. Um, you know, grab a coffee or somebody that's from, I don't know, Wisconsin or something like that. Right. And there's a couple of you guys that are, are from that state. So it, it, it's, it's pretty good in that regard. We've had, uh, several students that have actually met through the course, which is, you know, that that's what it's all about, right? Um, getting people together with similar mindsets and helping everybody kind of achieve the, the same goal. So um, appreciate that shout out, Michael. Uh, it, it's it's really appreciated. Um, and uh, we, I mean, during the during the course of the year, the the price is uh, is it's going to be uh, two thousand dollars, right? Because um, we really want students in this course that are going to kind of give it their all. Um, and, um, we, we see it, we, we see it in like the product submissions, right, Josh, like the, mm -hmm. the, the students that are really serious about, um, this kind of business model, like their submissions, they'll, they'll, they'll like, that's another thing we offer guys in the course. It's like these product check services. So, um, you know, me or, or Josh will, uh, kind of check over your products and like based on our, experience in this field will kind of give you guys okay maybe this will work maybe tweak this do this uh this mm -hmm. isn't gonna work type thing so one thing we noticed though in doing those checks is uh how amazing um some of the students are and how serious they are and you know the the kind of fly by nights uh that we get as well but um yeah really appreciate that comment michael um and let's see Josh, did you set up an LLC in the States as I'm in Australia? Yeah, I mean, uh, really good question. So when I was, um, like now I'm living in the States, right? So I have LLC set up. However, when I was getting started, you know, like seven years ago, I was back home in Australia. And uh, what I did do, though, I didn't set up an LLC because um, it, it is a little bit, uh, at the time, I, I didn't um, see that it wasn't a good ROI return for me, right? So what I did though was uh, set up a P2I limited company, right? So you can just go to easycompanies.com.au, um, set one up, cost about 300, 400, 500 bucks, set it up yourself, don't go through an accountant and um, set one up and uh, you can, it's pretty awesome. You can actually start selling in USD to another country from Australia, 
right? That's what I did. Um, and uh, well, that's what a lot of people do. It's not, it's not just exclusive to, uh, to, to us. So um, yeah, it, it is, uh, I'd recommend doing that. Um, and uh, don't feel like just because you're outside of the US um, that you can't do it. Um, there is though uh, something to be mindful of. Uh, it will, whenever you have payouts, right? So whenever uh, Shopify accumulates the funds that you've sold and then uh, you've gone ahead and uh, you get paid, it will do a foreign currency translation um, based on Shopify's rates. So that's just something to be uh, mindful of. But yeah. All right. So hmm. um, I'm not going to answer that last question just because it's a little bit conflicting with the state of the world, but, uh, and I don't think we can mention it, but I see, <laughs> I see the text and I will do my best to answer it. I don't, uh, well, Actually, this is in your domain, Josh. What what yeah. do you think? Yeah. So without going too much into politics or like uh, how countries are run or whatever, um, I can tell you that there is some like it, I'd be stupid to say there's no effect, right? Um, there is some effect. However, um, overall dropshipping is remember like guys, dropshipping is a way of getting in, right? It, it's a way of getting in. Like don't. Don't get too like hellbent focused on on the that idea and think that that's the business model that is going to make it for you, right? A lot of these guys that do do drop shipping full time uh, and successfully, they have actually moved on to an advanced level of drop shipping drop shipping that you don't see on YouTube, right? A lot of people make it seem like you uh, uh it, it's it's like the beginner friendly one, but um, you know, it's not. But yeah, there is definitely an effect. All right. So Anthony says, what do you spend per product um, on Amazon per PPC? So I assume you mean uh, like uh, each product that you bring to the market on average, how much do you spend? So it's really going to, it's really going to vary. Um, I found a lot of like initially you're, it depends. It really depends on on your budget and how how comfortable you are. Because the idea is to spend money on PPC to obviously make sales. But another thing you need to think about is you're getting data to make informed decisions on what keywords you can kind of you know keep in your campaigns or take out of your campaigns, right? So mm -hmm. the the thing that a lot of students kind of get uh, uh, wary about is the fact that they end up spending a good bit of money on PBC in the beginning, but you got to think that, um, you know, you're starting off from zero, you're starting off with zero views. Um, you're starting off buried. So the vast majority of the sales that you're going to get are from PPC. Now we're going to get into, um, we start getting sales for PPC. We're going to start getting some organic rank. So organic rank from an Amazon perspective, that is when the real money is made, right? Because these are basically, Free sales. You do not have to drive traffic to get these sales. People just search up your keyword, find your product for the keyword, and then um, basically purchase your product. So that's where the term tacos comes into play or total advertising cost of sale. Um, and that's one big advantage that Amazon has on the rest of e-commerce as a whole is that you can get those um, nice organic sales. But it's volatile at the same time, right? Like um, if you do end up losing your rank, you're going to have to counteract that on um, with spend on PBC. Now, how does that answer your question? Well, I didn't really answer it. Um, I would say on average when you're, um, let's just say you're properly ranked uh, low end right now, I'm spending around a hundred dollars per day on on a uh, on one particular product for example it's a new one that i brought to market but it's generating around you know four hundred dollars in revenue per day right so i would it's almost in a maintenance mode perspective but not quite yet oh oh can i ask can, can i answer this question holy moly i freaking love this question so much <laughs> um all right guys so uh Dan, um, so we're going to scroll back up a little bit just to get get some uh, of your questions answered here. But I just saw this one. I had to jump in. So a lot of people, actually, you know what? 
sorry, Jeff, sorry. I'm going to throw you under the bus. This is actually a better question for you uh, because it's more related to the Amazon FBA. Um, I know how to answer it, but I think it'll be better coming from you. Uh, it's the Dan Couture. Everyone talks about this thing being passive. How many hours per week do you think is needed to run a million dollar FBA business? Right. So for Amazon FBA, yeah. it is um, honestly probably... It really depends because there's two modes you can be in when it comes to um, running an Amazon dominant business, right? Because because mm -hmm. for me personally, Amazon USA in Canada is probably 90% of the business, 85. And then there comes in the Shopify, the Etsy, the Walmart, that's the other 15%. So if we were strictly to stay with Amazon, I would say in maintenance mode, five hours, five, six, five hours at most. If we're outside of maintenance mode and we're working on product development and stuff like that, maybe closer to like 20, 25 hours or however much you really want to put into it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's been weeks where I've had to answer like three customer inquiries on my Amazon uh, store and that's been pretty much it. So what's that? Like 20 minutes. So if you mm -hmm. want to put it like there, there's going to be weeks where there's you know, very little work to do. And then there's going to be other weeks where, um, you know, you're dealing with suppliers, you're doing cash flow, inventory forecasting, you know, you're, you're working on uh, product development and, and stuff like that. Because the, the point you get complacent, that's when competitors kind of come in and, and walk all over you. So mm. uh, you probably have a good answer for that too, uh, uh, Josh. So let's hear yours. Um, so on the, uh, I mean, on the Shopify side, uh, I would say it's it, it like to get to passive income, it takes a damn long time. Like if I'm going to be honest, um, because there are so many things that you need to, uh, consider, right. There, are, you need to run ads. You need to be constantly reiterating products, product designs, um, running sales, you know, running email marketing campaigns, SMS campaigns, making sure your Google PPC is up, making sure your Amazon PPC is going as well, right? So it's definitely possible to get to this um, passive level, but I, I would say that your business needs to be doing easily, you know, probably like five mil for you to kind of take a step back and really just hire other people to take over those roles for you. So, um, that's that's kind of my thing. I, I just hate the idea of people saying, "Oh, this is so passive," and you know, you, you're gonna like you know pay us this amount of money, and you're gonna instantly get the return back tomorrow, and you don't have to lift a finger. Like it's just that's just not how it is. All right, we're, we're starting businesses, and uh, we wanted to be transparent with that, and that's why you know our students like it because I don't know, I kind of give them a little bit of a, a hard talk here and there, um, kind of put them back in line. Um, but, uh, and, and they appreciate it just because it's, yeah. Yeah. And it is not passive at all in the beginning. <laughs> you need to bootstrap for like two years uh, yeah, before yeah. you get to a, you know, well, especially <laughs> on the Amazon, like on the Amazon side as well. Like oh, yeah. um, a lot of the work is done in the beginning to get your, you know, your manufacturing done, your, mm -hmm. um, right. Like to contacting mm -hmm. suppliers, figuring out, um, you know, the freight borders, how you're going to get your product from China or, you know, wherever the case may be to the United States or Canada, wherever you're sending the inventory. Right. But like that comes with that is what comes with that is a lot of like free time. Let's say your, your products on the boat for two months, right. You have a lot of free time. Well, mm -hmm. okay. So do you know how to run TikTok ads? You know how to run Facebook ads? You know how to run Pinterest ads? Have you made your website? Because the whole encompass here is to have an Amazon and Shopify business under mm -hmm. the same brand. Right. Cause that's the full compass of e-commerce. So there was another question here that said, um, what, um, what percentage of your business is Shopify versus FBA? Uh, personally, I'm probably 85% FBA, um, 10% Shopify. Josh, you're probably way different. Yeah, I mean, it depends on which business you're talking about, but like the the brand that um, I always reference um, in the course to the the course members is uh, it's about I'd say about sixty percent Shopify, forty percent Amazon. Um, we understand uh, the power of it, and um, man, it's been 
I just love the sales from Amazon. It's like free money. All right. Um, okay, so let's go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna scroll up a bit because um, there was there is a guy, Anthony. Anthony, I, I've not neglected you, man. I've seen I've seen you. Um, so I'm gonna go up because you had a few good questions as well. Um, you were asking about. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna quickly like rocket like just blast these out. Uh, C seems better for cost versus air right now. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously for C, it's it's always going to be better for cost, but however, there are caveats. Um, it's going to take longer for you, right? So depending on what mode of C transport you take, it's about 30, 45, 60 days, depending on how, uh, you know, uh, how little you want to spend uh, versus air, you know, it's a lot more expensive. However, it's going to get to you very quickly. So it depends on the circumstance in which you're in. Um, do you do drop shipping with Shopify now? I do not do drop shipping anymore. I purchase all of my inventory uh, straight out and then we, we store it in our warehouses and uh, we go from there. Um, I'm just answering Anthony's ones real quick. Um, uh, and then he had one other one. Um, Oh yeah, I think that's it. Do you source outside marketing to assist with your brands? Uh, no, I, I've tried uh, working with agencies for my uh, Shopify brands, and uh, uh, let's just say I lost ten grand uh, working with one. Um, and uh, yeah, never again. All right. So Dan says, can you talk about using a third-party warehouse as an intermediary before delivering to an FBA warehouse? Why do this? Benefits versus fees, etc. So there's several reasons why I think you would do this, Dan, and I do this, uh, for example. So I have a warehouse in Las Vegas that I send all my inventory from China to. Uh, so China to Las Vegas, Las Vegas to usually the warehouse, FBA warehouse in Las Vegas when I complete shipping plan. So there's several reasons to do this. Um, the first reason that I did it was uh, product volatility, right? And to have like a bit of a cushion when it came, came to inventory forecasting, right? So th this having a warehouse kind of gave me the option to, um, if I had a particular product that over a three month interval, it would se se sell 900 units, so 300 units a month. Um, and I ordered a thousand units, right? So if I sent that right to my warehouse in Las Vegas, and then I had a month where I sold 500 and then, and then, um, or let's just say, or like I forecasted for, you know, 900 units selling over those three months. Right. So if I were to send that, um, if I wanted to like get it down to a science and send it in from uh, just China straight to the fulfillment centers, um, I wouldn't have that like kind of cushion for, uh, you know, product volatility. So I could sell 500 one month and then 400 the next, and then boom, uh, month three, I'm, I'm out of stock. But if I have that inventory reservoir at my warehouse in Las Vegas or, you know, warehouse, wherever, uh, it, it's going to really come in handy because you could trickle in 200, 200, 300 units here and there. Another big thing is the amount of money that you're going to save on storage fees. So, uh, the storage fees uh, that Amazon charges, especially in Q4, are crazy when in comparison to a um, fulfillment center. So uh, if you just send in, you know, let's just say you're selling to 150 units a week, you send in um, 400 units every two weeks, right? Uh, forecasting 150 units each week. Um, you're going to be using a lot less storage space in Amazon, however, you're still you're still staying in stock consistently, right? Um, so that is one of the big things you save fees on. Obviously, you have to pay the warehouse that you're currently storing your inventory at uh, fees. But my storage fees um, ended up going down from an Amazon perspective uh, with this. And obviously, with this warehouse, I was uh, given I had to pay them the storage fee and. Another big thing is the fact that I can track exactly where my inventory is going to be sent in from a fulfillment center perspective. It always goes to Las Vegas or Phoenix, right? If my warehouse is in Las Vegas, the fulfillment center, when I say ship to Amazon, it's always going to be the closest one, right? Because that's when it comes to using Amazon's partner carriers. So I find that is like a very big advantage. The, the biggest advantage to me, though, was having that peace of mind that, okay, even if I did run out of stock, I wouldn't be hauling my hairs out hoping that 
this freight forwarder is going to get through customs, get through this and that um, within like a two week interval. So I don't, I don't run out of stock. So, and, and, and over the last several years, I mean, inventory forecasting has become a, a bit of a nightmare because uh, everybody knows what happened a few years ago. Freight forwarders went from taking two months to get across the sea to four, five, six months, right? Because of port delays and uh, port shutdowns and kind of stuff like that. And then the manufacturing on top of it all uh, ended up making things uh, pretty hectic. So I know I went a little bit in, in detail here, but I, I think like when you get to a certain scale um, of your e-commerce business, and it's not even like a very, very big scale, right? Is um, it's very really important to have that third party warehouse. Right. Um, so Vanessa was asking a question about, um, you know, should the product that I sell always be over twenty dollars? Uh, can I have a really low priced product uh, if it's really inexpensive to buy in bulk, um, and I'm still making a profit? So. A few things to discuss there, um, because uh, across across the products that I sell, one of them is lower than twenty dollars, and um, I'm like very open to sharing like what our challenges are in that with that business model. So, um, you know, ever since last year, um, July last year, advertising costs have been rising, right? Especially Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, all of this because competition increases um, you know, the iOS 14.5 update also creates some issues. Now, the reason why I personally would always go for a product that is priced higher than $20 is because of purely because of margin and because of you have more, um, you have more cushion in order to spend money to acquire customers. Just to give you an idea. Um, if you have a, like, let's say one of my products, it's $12, right? $13, I think. Um, and if you consider that, Let's say that product costs me, I don't know, 30%, right? 30% to, um, to manufacture costs me $3 um, and $1 to ship, right? So that's $4. So I have another $8, $9 left. Um, on a percentage level, the margin is healthy. However, if I'm advertising on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Google, wherever, um, I only have $9 in order to acquire a customer. Just across all of the brands that I'm working in, um, our average cost is anywhere between twenty to fifty dollars, including that twelve dollar product. Right. So if you do the math, right, if it's twelve dollars, twenty dollars to acquire a customer, you're in loss already by eight dollars. Right. So it's just not a good place to go. Now there is a caveat I can talk about is if you do organic marketing with TikTok right now, it's a gold rush. Right. For the next one two years, it is a fantastic place for beginners to get started with very little capital. If you have a twelve dollar or twenty dollar product or whatever, you can go out and make it viral um, very easily. In, as a matter of fact, and you can start selling that product and have a pretty healthy like healthy cash balance at the end of it. Um, and you can make it work in that way. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd say about that. All right. So Krishna says, for my first Amazon product, should I have a custom labeled box done, including branded instructions label? What about including a slip to allow users to register their email on my site? Yes, I don't see any issues with this. Um, I think... It needs to, it needs to, your, your, um, it's always nice to have fantastic packaging and, and, and stuff like that. Right. But, but there are cases where, um, it's not going to overly move the needle too much. Right. So if I ordered like a lawn chair, right. Am I going to really care if it comes in pristine, um, beautifully packaged packaging or a regular cardboard box? Right. Is that, is that really going to matter to me? But if I order something that is going to be gifted, such as, I don't know, like a, a necklace or a ring or, or something like that for my girlfriend, um, obviously that's going to be a case where I really do care about the packaging and, and stuff like that. And maybe having um, a slip to hop on hop on the uh, website of the brand, right? Because uh, I want to be a loyal customer now. They supply me with a fantastic product. So I think it's very dependent on um, the product as so many things are in, in e-commerce, which is, which is what separates us all. It separates me from Josh, from, you know, uh, all the students in, uh, in the communities, right? Everybody 
puts their own kind of spin on this on this e-commerce thing and goes their own way based on their 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 products and stuff like that. So I would say most of the times, yes, sometimes it doesn't overly matter about your packaging. Okay. So Dan, um, Dan Warfield has another question about ads. Um, so what ads tend to convert the best? Also, if starting, what would what would you budget for ads? Finally, where? Um, so it's a three part question, and uh, I'd recommend. It depends again on your, uh, I guess, your proficiency level, right? If you're if you're comfortable with direct to consumer advertising, direct response marketing, um, it, it depends. But uh, I'm going to talk on a assumption that you have absolutely no idea and you're just beginning and you want to get started. So uh, the type of ads that generally tend to convert the best is uh, like user generated content ads. Um, the reason being for that is like simply, um, if uh, if I tell you how great um, you know my product is, how likely are you to buy it? maybe you know 50 percent chance right depending on how what do you think about me but if your girlfriend says oh you know dan i i want to you know this product is so amazing i think we should buy it and the high, the chance of you buying that because she's told you that pretty high right or maybe she's using the product and she says i love this product and you should buy this product as well right very very high that's why use gc content is so good uh, because it's coming from another person right and it's raw and it's uh, it's real um so if you're starting out uh, what would you budget for ads i definitely think about like 500 bucks is a pretty healthy budget to start with ads um regardless of the, of the platform and then finally which platform do you want to start well the beauty is that facebook owns instagram so if you use facebook ads then you can advertise on both um it, but uh, i would say the big opportunity right now is actually tiktok and tiktok organic um, because you can get a lot of traction very quickly uh, without spending a dollar on ads you test different angles that, that we teach in the course and then from that you can take the ones that blow up uh, blow up organically and then run some pay, uh, dollars behind it, light the fire, and uh, yeah, go from there. So, Dan, I hope that helps. All right. So, so uh, there's a question on can Amazon pick up from a supplier warehouse and ship it to Amazon? I would assume in the US. Yeah, there's actually called Amazon Global Logistics, and this is a pretty new program that was rolled out. However, it's not something that we have that's tried and true. Um, so one freight forwarder that we are affiliated with at Ecom Freedom, I use it, Dan uses it, Andrew uses it for their own brands. Um, on the Amazon side of things is for shipping. And basically what they do is, you know, whenever I have a shipment that is ready to be picked up um, at my supplier's warehouse, I, you know, text my freight forwarder on uh, WeChat and I'm just like, hey guys, can you pick this up, ship it to um, XYZ address in the US. And then they handle, you know, all the all the documents, uh, the customs bonds and all that fun stuff. So when it comes to shipping and getting your product from point A to point B uh, from China to the U.S., it sounds daunting. It sounds so daunting. But that is like the freight forwarder's job to, you know, make it all inclusive for you so you don't have to worry about any of that small things. Because I remember when I first started out, I was like, oh, my God, what is XWorks? What is FOB? What is DDP? What is, you know um F, like all, all these all these different types of inco terms it was just very um overwhelming for me when you know now it's to the point where i'm like okay hey guys can you pick this up drop it off over here and then whenever you know you kind of need a update you just send them a note on um wechat right so that's like one um really good aspect uh that we offer um with uh the course is some of these contacts, right? So for example, for shipping for, uh, as a freight forwarder, um, you know, Suna uh, is who we recommend for all our photography and students photography uh, for that matter. And, you know, Jungle Scout, all these other uh, kind of softwares that are going to do fantastic for helping you guys along. Um, but uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. So, um, we had a question about, uh, 
Sorry, guys. There's, there's quite a few questions coming through. So uh, for those of you that are new, uh, you guys are just joining the live stream now. Jeff and I, uh, we're just going through and uh, opening up the floor to you guys. If you have any questions about e-commerce or you just want to feel out like who we are um, before you want to perhaps take a plunge, by all means, take any, uh, take all the time you need, ask any questions, and we're happy to answer them um, for as long as more reasonably possible. Um, now, the next part is... Zaltan is asking about the e-commerce journey. Uh, did you fall into an analysis paralysis? If yes, how did you get out of it and make decisions that led to your success? Um, and uh, yeah, uh, okay. So real quick, yeah, like for sure, when you get started, like Jeff was talking about, right? There is always going to be, an, like it's going to be overwhelming, right? There's going to be a lot of information that comes through. You don't know what the heck to do. And uh, yeah, you get stuck into that analysis paralysis. Now, just understand that regardless of what level of business that you see someone else at, they know very little about that as well. Like we all make, we all make mistakes. We're flawed, right? We all always screw up, um, but that's okay, right? Making mistakes is fine. Uh, the biggest, most important thing in entrepreneurship and just running your business is just to take action very quickly or even consistently, right? Being consistently good is better than being periodically great, right? Just being good over five years is going to help you build a easily, you know, a six, seven figure business, help you quit um, the job that you're in if you want to quit um, and open up a lot of doors for you. But it's the matter of taking one step at a time. And it's okay if you make a mistake, you can always go back and fix it, right? So just uh, don't get too caught on it. So Anthony just asked a quick question about um, supplier asking for his logo and he doesn't have one. I think the best thing to do is, you know, put together a logo or a branding package, Anthony. Um, that's a, uh, that's something you're going to need um, as an e-commerce brand, right? Um, I mean, it's, it's said in that statement, e-commerce brand, a brand requires a logo. So where do you get a logo made? Um, the places that we recommend are, Probably Fiverr and Upwork, um, but before you hire somebody to complete a brand package for you or a logo for that matter, uh, make sure you just like diligently read the reviews um, on the actual person that you're going to hire, right? I mean, you're not going to join a course for $800 without reading reviews, right? You're not going to hire somebody to um, do your logo without reading the reviews in the course, right? You want to make sure you're, what you're getting is quality. So that's where I would start. And, um, but definitely having a logo and having a brand is something that I think is crucial uh, uh, for, for e commerce for sure. But, um, so, um, Hala uh, asks a pretty good question. Um, so do you have any experience with Amazon FBA multi-fulfillment channels? Um, so, yep, this is actually how I got started um, at the beginning. Um, I used Amazon as my uh, my warehouse and um, it was awesome. And uh, I've actually had a love-hate relationship with Amazon for a little while now. I've gone into, started in Amazon, took all of my inventory out, put it back in uh, just because the rates were pretty awesome. So uh, Amazon overall, uh, just to give you an idea, is pretty pretty awesome as a multi-channel fulfillment partner. Um, you know, all the fees, everything included. You know, uh, for a six-pound box, um, it ended up costing us like eleven, twelve dollars to send it to all the forty-eight states in the U.S. Um, as opposed to using my own fulfillment center or sorry, uh, a three PL, uh, they were charging us like eighteen to. 25 um, including like pick back costs and all that kinds of stuff so um, amazon was definitely the uh, pretty awesome uh, um, pretty awesome alternative for multi-channel fulfillment so yeah Sunda was asking, is there a chance to get a discount on the membership? That's pretty much why we're here. We're doing the biggest sale of the year uh, for us. Um, you know, it's it's two courses or, um, you know, discounted already. Um, yeah. So another quick question on, do you, do you need to have a brand before you have a product? Um, what is the difference between Jungle Scout and Alibaba? So, um, uh, you, you kind of, the idea here is to uh, find a product uh, to bring to the market first, right? And then you build all your branding around um, that product, right? So 
But that's the idea. And then Jungle Scout and Alibaba are, are two completely different things. Um, so Jungle Scout is basically an extension or uh, software that is used to uh, research products on Amazon. So it shows you things like a product's revenue, you know, their bestseller ranking, how much reviews they have, how new they are to e-commerce. Um, and uh, Alibaba is basically the biggest supplier website in the world. It is what bridges the gap from China manufacturing to, you know, uh, American um, American products, right? Uh, because every product, you know, a lot of the products that uh, we use here in, in the U.S. and Canada uh, are, you know, when you look at the bottom of it, it's just made in China, like this mug, right? So we're just uh, we're just the middleman. Um, we're trying to be the middleman here in a in a way, and you know, kind of become marketing um, and product development uh, gurus. But uh, so Dan says, has the tennis racket mirror tennis racket mirror going? Any sales yet? So Dan, yeah, this is one of the products that we sh- peel back the curtain on in the course to show you guys what the competitive advantage is. So basically, we take a mirror out, we sh- we stripped it. And then we um, put a uh, a mirror in the actual tennis racket, right? So uh, there's no products that were on Amazon or you know that we could find that were similar to this product. So this is a product that we're going to take to uh, to market. Uh, Dan, we are currently waiting on uh, some final touches to it, actually, uh, just because um, the manufacturer is uh, kind of shut down for. Uh, I guess you could guess why right now, but uh, we're expecting to see it come through in the new year. Awesome. Uh, so this question is about uh, from Ned's um, about jumping on the sale and like how do we get started? Okay, so well, first of all, uh, welcome. We're glad to have you. And uh, the easiest way is there's there's two components, uh, two main components, I'd say about you know. The course that you've jumped into one is the actual foundational learnings right so you jump onto the website and uh, log in and you're going to get access to all of that um, including all the pdfs all of the resources that we provide all of that's on the website now the second part of that and the second prong is uh, pretty much the community that you're in right so um, you join the community you, you're going to get a link uh, once you uh, join and essentially that's where we host you know all of the mentorship you can dm us directly um, and that's where we uh, we answer any questions that you have at pretty much any time whenever we're available, right? So there's two components um, and then, uh, sorry, I lied, three. There's three components. The third one is the live calls, right? So in in the Facebook group, we give you a schedule of when we do the lives. Um, and the first thing that you should do is sign up for that live because we can talk face-to-face um, essentially. And uh, that's that's the best place to, to get started. All right, so... While I'm waiting for Facebook to approve my store, what are the three things that I should do to get my Shopify store ready for marketing? What do you think, Josh? Yeah. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I'd ask uh, Zach. So if you're waiting for Facebook to approve your products, are you trying to sell it on, you know, through Facebook catalogs um, or on the Facebook store, right? Um, uh, that's one thing. I, I think that you are doing that. Um, the beauty of it, though, is that you can actually just use the Facebook Ads Manager to actually start selling or running traffic to your store, right? You don't need to wait for Facebook to approve certain products. Um, that's kind of the beauty of this, right? As long as you follow their terms and conditions, the terms of service or terms of advertising, then you can advertise and just run traffic. So the top three things that I would be uh, kind of figuring out uh, with that is uh, making sure your landing page is absolutely pristine. You know, we I, I literally recorded a one hour long um, lecture inside the course that goes through all of the components of the, with every little element of conversion rate optimization that I know. Um, and uh, so you go and you make your landing page beautiful and converted, um, optimized for conversion, sorry. Uh, the next thing is understanding your avatar and writing your ad copy, right? Make sure your ad copy seems and uh, is, uh, resonates with your audience, right? Make sure you don't, you know, yeah, just make sure your ad copy is good, right? And we go through that in the course as well. And then finally, uh, the most important thing is actually making sure your creative, your video or your image um, resonates with your audience as well. So this is all through research and just making sure that it has a really strong hook 
a scroll stopper that's going to stop people when they're uh, browsing on uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be. So those are the top three things I would recommend. But yeah, you don't have to wait for any approvals. All right. So Johnny says, when launching your first product, how often do you or should you change your PPC daily budget for each campaign? I often run out of budget, which causes my campaign to end. Yeah, so Johnny, there, there's a there's a pretty uh, there's a formula basically uh, for staying in budget for you know eighty to ninety five percent of the day because ideally you want to set your budget at um, you know whatever you're comfortable spending right so you want to you want to set it at a hundred dollars right but you want that hundred dollars to last you eighty or ninety percent of the day so. If you're spending two dollars a click, right, it, it's probably going to run out pretty, pretty, um, pretty soon. But if you lower it to a dollar fifty, right, and you're going to get, or if you lower it to a dollar, you're going to get double the clicks, and then assuming uh, double the double the sales, right, for for cheaper clicks, right. So we actually have a video that goes in depth in this on the ecom freedom youtube channel so uh, there's another youtube channel um that is affiliated with ecom freedom it's called ecom freedom youtube channel i just said that um but it's uh, basically just a separate entity uh from dan's channel here which we're coming on and talking to you guys live on uh, so i would check that out it is called leveraging the budgets dashboard and um that is a great place to start. So, all right, guys. So with that, we're going to wrap up the QA for the day. Um, so I think you guys got about four hours. If you guys feel free to leverage this Black Friday sale. Um, like like I said, there's four hours left. Uh, it, it's going to go back to the regular prices after um, today's sale, which are, you know, it, it might take you guys a, a little longer to come up with the money, but we will have another sale next Black Friday and we will constantly be keeping this course completely up to date and adding more modules for you guys as we see fit and as we can. Um, and I hope to see you guys in the um, Facebook groups over the next uh, over the next week or so. And if you guys join the course, feel free to DM me and um, your Josh and say, hey. Uh, just so we know who you guys are. Um, and yeah, fantastic. Uh, you got any last things to say, Josh? No, uh, yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a blast to hang out with you guys. Uh, we appreciate your time. All right, guys.